Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB problem set number five. Um, there's a link to the problems in the description below and a link to a playlist of all the problem sets as well. Uh, let's see what we're working with. All right, so given that y equals negative four x minus eight is tangent to y equals three x squared plus bx plus four, find the possible values of b, use a calculator. All right, so when I think of this, I think like the tangent line must intersect the function which means that negative four x minus eight must be equal to three x squared plus bx plus four at some value. Um, and then I also think if, if negative four x minus eight is tangent to three x squared plus bx plus four, then it must be the case that the derivatives are equal, right? So they must have the same slope. So negative four, the derivative of negative four x minus eight must be equal to six x plus b. Those are two things I know. That actually gives me a system of equations so I have this system, right? So the initial one is just like the y values must be equal. They must hit each other, right? That's the whole point of a tangent line. And then also the derivatives. So negative four must be equal to six x plus b. That's my thought. This is a calculator problem. So I'm gonna let the calculator solve this. You can see when I did this, I did something weird kind of. Um, I initially told it to solve for x and y and then I got like this confusing answer where it was like y is equal to c1. And I was like, what is happening here? Then I realized looking at my system, there is no y in the system. So when I asked it to solve for x and y, it was like, y can be anything, who cares? Um, so then I resolved it using x and b. Um, and it's telling me that x should be negative two. And when x is negative two, b is eight, or x could be positive two. And when x is positive two, b is negative 16. The question is to find the possible values of b. Always make sure you go back and read the actual question because calculus questions are kind of like notorious for asking for something that maybe you weren't expecting, right? They could be like, find the sum of the B values, like who knows? Um, all right, new problem. So that's a problem I wouldn't have wanted to do by hand. Like, can you do it by hand? I guess it's a two by two system and you get integers. So like, it definitely seems that way, but it said use your calculator. So make sure you know how to use your calculator to do these things. Um, all right, I want to evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 of the square root of x squared plus 3 minus square root of 12 over x minus 3. And I want to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of the the absolute value of x plus 2 over x plus 2. All right. So we got, uh, I think the first one, you could definitely do by just rationalizing, right? If you're in that frame of mind, like rationalize, rationalize, right? That you can do by rationalizing. You got radicals, you don't know what to do, multiply by the conjugate, right? But I would prefer to do this as a limit definition problem because I think that it looks like the limit definition. And in that it looks like limit definition, the function, I think, is the square root of x squared plus 3. And then I think we're trying to find uh, the derivative at x equals 3, right? That would be f of x minus f of 3 over x minus 3. So I'm going to find f prime using the chain rule. So f prime, bring down the 1 half uh, and then thing to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the thing. The derivative of the thing is 2x. Um, and now I need to find f prime of three. So if I just plug three into that, you know, you could simplify it if you want to. I just need f prime of three. So the value of that limit is three over root 12. That's the way I would want to do this problem. And I want you to think about, like when you see a limit, think, is this the limit definition of the derivative? Because it comes up all the time. Um, all right, so for the next one, this is one of the famous graphs that is on less, it's less famous than it should be, right? It's like, this should be one of the big graphs that people know, because it's very simple, um, but people don't tend to know it. Um, this is just, you know, the absolute value of x over x shifted two units to the left. So that's what I'm gonna draw. Um, so we are at one to the right, and we are at negative one to the left. Now we're approaching negative two from the left. So I've drawn an arrow to indicate that that's what we're doing. The logical y value would be negative one as you do that. So the limit as x approaches negative two from the left of that stuff is negative one, and that's our answer. Uh, all right, next up. Evaluate the derivative of quantity x plus three times e to the x times sine of x. All right, so three things. We don't really know an explicit rule for three things, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a product rule where I just group the first two things together and I say that's first, right? So when I find the derivative of the first, I'm gonna have to use a product rule on that by itself but I'm saying that's first, and then the second thing is sine, so we are gonna do this. So dy dx is, we got first, which is x plus three, e to the x, 
derivative of the second, which is cosine, plus second, which is sine, derivative of the first. So for the derivative of the first, we need the product rule again. So the product rule on this, we have first is x plus three, second is e to the x. So I'm gonna do a, a big parenthesis and our product rule. First, derivative of the second, plus second, derivative of the first, close that big parenthesis. And you know what? I'm just gonna leave that. I mean, we could probably clean that up. I don't see what that's gonna clean up to. Um, but the point was you can group two of them together. That's what I wanted you to get out of that problem. Not so much like, now simplify it and something magic happens because nothing magic is gonna happen. All right, use one-sided limits and the limit definition of the derivative to find f prime for f of x equals the absolute value of x. Now this, not this function, but this uh, like problem stem, like the setup, you're gonna see that sometimes on the free response questions on the AP exam. So make sure you definitely understand how to do this procedure. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm not sure what notation to use for the derivative from the left, so uh, I've done something a little weird here. I don't think this is standard uh, notation. Uh, the absolute value of x is just the opposite of x when x is less than zero, and then it's x when x is greater than or equal to zero. You definitely need to know that to kind of go through this process. So step one, we're gonna find the derivative, I don't know, from the left. So I just put a little from the left there. It's gonna be limit as h per zero from the left of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. All right, so that's what we're doing. So now we need to think like, when I'm to the left of zero, what is f of x? Well, to the left of zero, x is less than zero, so we're gonna use the opposite of x. So we replace um, our function with the opposite of x. So the opposite of the quantity x plus h minus the opposite of x all over h. And then if we simplify this, we get uh, the limit as h approaches zero of negative h over h, which is just the limit of negative one, which is negative one, which makes sense because we know the slope of the absolute value of x is definitely negative one to the left of zero. Like it has to be. Um, and then, uh, you know what's funny is I never like wrote the derivative. I just like found two parts of the derivative. Maybe, maybe when I'm done with this part, I'll like try to handwrite it and you can see what that looks like on the fly. All right, we're going from the right. Uh, it's going to be the limit as h approaches zero from the right, f of x plus h minus f of x, and then over h, feeling a little impatient. Okay, um, if we're to the right of zero, or as h approaches zero from the right, x plus h is bigger than zero. Um, so we're going to go with x. I'm not really happy with my explanation on this problem, but, uh, you know, the work holds up. So we get this. I mean, I'm so unhappy with it, I forgot to even write the answer. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna write my final answer somewhere. Where? I don't know. Uh, all right, here, here goes. I'll write my final answer, like, over... The problem is I can't really see where the page ends. F prime of x is negative one when x is less than zero, and then one when x is greater than zero. This is definitely less than perfect work. Uh, but you know, this, these are just homework problems, right? You don't have to be totally perfect. Um, and, it's, and it's definitely, you know, the right idea. All right, anyway, I'm gonna end this here. I hope this was helpful and good luck.